the fifth kind. Check out our official website at fifthkind.tv. When you look at things like the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, and you read about ancient Atlantis and how Egypt was created out of the image of Atlantis to create a new civilization. Then you go across the world to places like Tula, Mexico, with these great Atlantean warriors. You start to say, okay, so Atlantis and those individuals that were in Atlantis looks like they influenced Egypt, looks like they influenced some parts of the Americas. We're talking about a, a very a grand civilization that seemed to have existed that was completely wiped out. And before that civilization was wiped out by great earth changes and maybe a number of other ways as well, is that we tried to, they, they tried to create and essentially protect this knowledge by creating other civilizations around the world. So that's why we try to place the pyramids of Egypt where we do. And then we get to other areas like the pre-Inca, the Olmec, and the Aztec, and the Indus Valley civilizations. And I basically, I, I lump it this way. If there's any advanced, sophisticated building that we find with things that it could ex would exceed the, the tools that we're told were around during the Iron Age and Bronze Age, then it means that those were from the lost civilizations. These, that means that there are civilizations around the world that were influenced by similar means that were then all destroyed. They were wiped out. And those are the civilizations that left most of this ancient evidence. But, so how do we place the rest of it? Well, in um, a tablet called The Legend of Atana, it's, he starts out by stating that when the old world was destroyed, he was basically um, counseled to create an entirely new civilization in the image of the old world in a place called the city of Kish. And that, that city still exists today in, in, a rum, in a ruined state. But he very st specifically mentions that he was tasked by the gods to be an archetype of the new world. Not just Kish, not just the town and the region he was part of, but to be an archetype of the entire new world. To redesign and re-lower what they called kingship to create this structure to a certain way that civilization was supposed to be created based on the way that it was before. So it really brings up the questions of, well, how many times have disasters wiped out and reset this and that it had to be created again and re-lowered through kingship? If you read the Bhagavad Gita and you start looking into Krishna talking to Arjun about um, the nature of reality and, and what the state of our consciousness is within this reality um, they clearly talk about how there was a great history that even preceded him and how a lot of that knowledge has been muddied and, and lost over time and so he's trying to educate Krishna this this God figure is trying to educate Arjun to the old ways and the knowledge of of the past now when I take that type of information those ancient writings that seem to mimic the story of Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita to me mimics almost in the same way of when we look at the story of Poimander, Poimander and Hermes, these ancient hermetic stories. It seems to be the same story. It's this intellig super intelligent God figure being that seems to be having this conversation with an incredibly enlightened and advanced human of some kind that's trying to educate him about the ways of reality. And in many, in every case, it seems like those interactions are always with something that's supreme over, over our understanding of reality. The reason why, the other reason why we, we, I put the Indus Valley civilizations where I do is not just because of those ancient writings that mimic a lot of other old ancient writings that, that are in the same time period, but because we find that the structures themselves, whether it's Barbara Hill Caves, Alora Caves with Kalesh Temple, or down in um, Kanhari Caves, whatever it is, these ancient Indus Valley civilizations that are carved, these structures, they were carved into solid basalt. And they're so sophisticated that they mimic in many ways a lot of this other building we find in places like Peru. Now, I have a little tidbit, Paul, that you I don't know if you've heard of yet, and I mentioned in a previous one of my presentations, um, in studying these tablets, 
there was an ancient Mesopotamian tablet that came up that I think is incredibly important. I don't know if it's got a lot of attention, but it's called Enki in the World Order. Not only does it mention Eridu as his first city ever, so it gives you a little bit of time frame of where it happened, but it mentions how he's having this conversation with this other deity goddess named Anana, and he says to her, what are you complaining about? You have all these different regions that you rule over. What, what do you need more for? And he lists them off and he talks about how the regions that are connected through trade and information, direct connections with those cultures. He mentions this region of Dilmun and Maluha in the tablet of with the same age and the time period of Eridu. So we know, and this is Enki speaking to Inanna, we know that this is an ancient writing. And what, what's so important about that? Well, if you look into where Dilmun is, it is the region of Saudi Arabia, Iran, right through the Persian area. Well, we're not told that that's connected, but it, it says right in here it was. But even more importantly, he mentions Maluha. If you go type that in and find out where that is, it's India. And so it's telling you that in ancient times, all of those cultures were connected. All of them. And that's how you say, okay, that makes so much sense. They had the ancient writings that match. They have the building sophistication that matches the same type of thing. Of course, they were all influenced together. And I think that's how we can we should be looking at a lot of where these pieces fit in. It seems to me that the more we actually dig, the larger the scale of the previous civilizations seems to become. Uh, it certainly feels like we're in a... Um, uh, are coming into a vulnerable moment in our planet's history. If you read Plato and if you take his theory seriously, we're long overdue for a reset because his belief was that it's every 5,000 years or so that something happens to reboot civilization on planet Earth. We, we seem to have been going for about 10,000 years without a solar flare wiping us out or triggering an ice age or being bombarded by comets or asteroids, um, just that timeline itself makes me think, hmm, we need to be doing some serious thought right now with regard to our longevity. Well, and I guess some could even argue that if some of this is um, somehow more controlled and less random than we think that maybe this window that we've been given that's longer than others is perhaps because, like the ancients have said, maybe this is the time that we're supposed to reach the next stage and they weren't really allowed to in some cases. You know, this is the time when humanity is supposed to take the next step forward into the universe and become a truly conscious eternal being. And, you know, if we had a wipeout right now, that wouldn't happen. When we can piece these events together, we unfold a story that is so much greater and so much more complicated and incredible that just has us understand, well, okay, so we are these sentient beings that seem to be created in the image of these gods that seem to want to create these civilizations. Like we're created in their image, not the other way around. And that's why we seem, like Lloyd Pye has pointed out, we seem so strange and unusual for this world that we're part of if it's just purely based on Darwinian evolutionary means with no outside influence. So over and over again, we seem to get this understanding that I, this is the reason I'm mentioning this, Paul. Some people will be like, why, what, why do I care about understanding all this? Like, what does it really do for me, though? What it does is it allows us to understand that we're basically creator gods here that have been made to believe that we are nothing and that we are just we just die and, that, and then we turn into um, the dirt and the soil and that there's nothing else that exists beyond us. But consciousness is an eternal energy. And if we're part of something much greater and that we have the potential to be those creator gods that bring ideas and then turn them into something real and then it allow that to then transform our entire civilization to then move us forward, that's how we're creator gods here. And I think that by us studying our past and understanding all these ancient stories and these incredible structures that were created, not to have an office building for some company to work in, but to maybe balance the energy of our ley lines of our planet and, and within the cosmos itself, we can start to reevaluate and, and look at ourselves and what we're doing here in a completely different light.